Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to draw a monogram logo in Adobe Illustrator. So what is a monogram? Well, a monogram is typically a motif that is created by combining or overlapping shapes into one symbol. So for example, the initials of an individual or a company can be combined together to create a monogram logo. So for this tutorial, we're going to be taking the letters D and F and combining them together into a monogram. So to start with, I've created a new document, 900 pixels wide and 900 pixels high. And I'm going to select the ellipse tool, left click and hold shift to draw a circle, deselect that fill, and then from the stroke panel on the right, just increase that stroke weight. So we'll bring this up to, let's go for 100. And then I'm going to select the pen tool and just left click and hold shift and left click again. You can also use the line tool for this. You'll see it wants to continue that line. Just go up to select and down to deselect. Next, you're going to want to turn your smart guides on. So just go up to view and just down to smart guides and make sure that they are selected. So when we drag this vertical line over here, it nicely snaps in place. Next, we're going to left click on the circle, hold alt and drag a copy of that up here and snap it in place there where it intersects. You'll see those pink smart guides, very, very helpful. Next, select the direct selection tool. And if you hover over this second circle we've created, we can see the path and we can see the anchor points. So we're going to click on this anchor point here, this bottom one with the direct selection tool and select delete or backspace. We can then click off anywhere else to deselect that shape and we'll click on the right anchor point and do the same again, hit delete or backspace. So we're just left with this quarter now. Now at the moment it's a bit tall. With the direct selection tool, let's just drag over these top two anchor points and we can use the mouse or the arrow keys just to nudge that down. What I'm also going to do is use the direct selection tool and if we hover over the first circle that we created, I'm going to click somewhere along this line. So we have an anchor point here at the top and an anchor point on the right. I'm going to click anywhere along that line between those two anchor points. And then just hit delete or backspace and it will remove that segment. Next, what I'm going to do is use the pen tool to click on this anchor point. So we're going to pick this one back up. So left click. So this is now active and we can continue this line. And I'm going to hold shift to make sure that it's perfectly horizontal and click out here where it lines up with the edge of the top of our shape. Again, it wants to continue that. So I'm just going to go to select or deselect. So we've got the letters D and F coming through nicely interwoven together. Next, what we're going to do is select everything and I'm going to hold Alt and Shift and just drag a copy over here. We're going to keep an editable copy just in case anything does go wrong. Now with this main copy left on the artboard, just select everything. Actually, there's one more bit we need to do. We just need to select the pen tool and click up here. Just left click, hold shift and left click again, just to extend that top piece out as well. And then go to select and deselect. So let's select this, go to object, expand, leave fill and stroke selected and click OK. And then what we can do is we have all these individual shapes here, all these different pieces that we can select and move around. We just want to drag over everything and in the Pathfinder panel on the right, just select Unite. That's the top left option. And then these individual parts all merge into one complete shape. Next, what we're going to do is select this complete shape and then swap the fill and the stroke. So ultimately we have no fill and we have a black stroke. And in the stroke panel, we can then start thickening this up. Let's go for 30 and we can align that stroke to the outside as well. Next, what I'm going to do is select the direct selection tool and just select this top anchor point here and then hold shift and select this top anchor point here. And then using the right arrow key or the mouse, 
I'm just going to nudge these out. So we're going to angle the top of the F and the middle part of the F. Now if I select the pen tool and just draw a line like this, that is parallel to the ends of the F, I'll give this a really bright color. We're just going to use this as a guide for a moment. Let's just drop that stroke weight down. So we can see that the red line here lines up with the middle part of the F and we just want to bring this out so it meets that red line. Just so the top of the F and the middle of the F both line up. So if we select the direct selection tool, we can just click up here on this top anchor point, hold shift and left click on this anchor point. So we've got these two anchor points selected and we're going to zoom in nice and close and rather than use the arrow keys which moves in set increments we're just going to left click and hold shift and just gradually drag this out and you can zoom in as close as you need to just remember to use the direct selection tool rather than the main selection tool so that looks pretty close to me and when we actually zoom all the way back out and remove the guide they are pretty much in line with one another. And what you can actually do is use the direct selection tool to drag over both of these end anchor points, hold shift and drag over these end anchor points, and then you can extend these out or back in as you need to, but you know that they're always going to be in line because they're moving together. Okay, so we're nearly there. One last thing we're going to do is that we know the stroke width is 30, so we're just going to select the line tool or the pen tool and just left click and hold shift to draw a straight line if it remembers that stroke weight of 30 brilliant if it doesn't you can just type it in here and we're just going to position this over here we can go into outline mode that's command or control y if we need to although at the moment as the shape we're creating is a line so the stroke by default is aligned to the center. The other shape we've created, the stroke is aligned to the outside. So in outline mode, there's actually nothing really to line up. If we do line this line up with our other shape, it will be off center. So we're going to have to do this by eye. So let's zoom in nice and close. If we need to, we can switch off our smart guides because in this instance, there's nothing to line up to. So we're going to have to do this by eye. Although if you zoom in thousands and thousands of percent and get it right by eye at an incredibly high zoom level, when you zoom back out, no one's going to be able to notice. See, so that looks pretty good. I'm just going to go and switch those smart guides back on and then use that direct selection tool just to select that bottom anchor point and just hold shift and drag it down. So it looks like this in outline mode, which doesn't really make any sense. However, if I select everything and go to object down to expand appearance, and then again, go to object, expand, leave fill and stroke selected and click OK. When you're selecting multiple objects at once, sometimes you just have to go object, expand appearance, and then expand it again. How I like to work is just keep expanding until you can't expand anymore, and then you know that it's all kind of expanded. There's no strokes left and it's all ready to start combining the shapes together. Now again, command or control Y to go into outline mode. You'll see we've got this kind of piece here and we want this of course to be one complete shape. So we just drag over everything and in the Pathfinder panel, top left we select Unite and it then merges that together. So we've now got our finished icon I'm just going to drag a copy over here by holding Alt. Again, just in case anything does go wrong. Hopefully it doesn't go wrong at this stage because we're pretty much done, but you never know. Okay, so we've got our icon and I'm just going to select this and hold Shift and Alt to scale towards the center. And what we can do is we can select this icon at the top and change this to a line to artboard. And we can then align it vertically and horizontally so we know it's in exactly the center. Next, what I'm going to do 
is select the icon. Now this is a personal preference, but for this tutorial, I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to rotate it. In fact, it looks a little bit like it's a bit on an angle there. So I'm not going to use shift, I'm going to manually rotate it. Just so it doesn't feel like it's leaning to one side. So this is something that you're going to need to do by eye. And you can zoom out as well, which sometimes help. Just make sure that the angle is correct. We don't want it to be leaning too much to the right or too much to the left. So there we go, that looks good to me. Let's select it again. Just align it back in the center if we need to. And if you want to manually adjust it, you can do. Next, I'm going to select the rectangle tool and just draw a rectangle or a square that meets the same size as the artboard. So in this case, this rectangle or square is going to be 900 pixels wide and 900 pixels high. And we can double click an existing color swatch, select preview and global, and then just change the color. Let's go for something nice and bright and click OK, and then just go to Object, Arrange, and Center Back. And the last thing to do is just select our finished monogram design and give this a color. For this tutorial, I'm going to go with good old white. And there we go, that's how to draw a monogram logo in Adobe Illustrator. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.